WCNC TV Charlotte. This is Flashpoint, where power and politics collide. Happy Sunday, everybody. Thanks for joining us here on Flashpoint. I'm Ben Thompson. Join me today, Charlotte City Councilman Tark Bakari and Larkin Eggleston. Go ahead, plug your podcast. What, the what's R it called, Ben? R&D in the QC. R&D in the QC. Mm, good one. Be sure to, where can they find, where can folks uh, find it? It's on Monday nights at 11 p.m. <laughs> All right. That's how Perfect. podcasts work. There you go. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you both for coming. We appreciate it. All right, first up, some serious news. This week, CMPD dealing with a yet another deadly police-involved shooting. CMPD responded to reports of a man with a gun at the Burger King on Beattiesford Road near I-85. Now, they say Denquirius Franklin would not put down the gun when he was asked to, so they felt threatened, ultimately shooting and killing him. However, witnesses who were there at the Burger King at the time, they, they, they're telling a different story. Drop your weapon. Drop your weapon. And then what happens? Shots fired. Only thing you see is this man drop. Now, just days after the shooting, CMPD Chief Kerb Putney met with the community. Hundreds packed the old sanctuary of Friendship Missionary Baptist Church looking for answers. Right now, like I said, it's too easy to kill a, for a policeman to kill another human being and get off on it. There's no reason why an unarmed man in any situation, in any situation, oftentimes there's no reason why an armed man has to be shot in the head. Of course, the investigation is ongoing. That officer is on paid leave as we speak. Uh, gentlemen, as two leaders here in our community, I just want to get first your initial reactions. So Larkin, I'll start with you. Yeah, I mean, it's a tragedy anytime somebody in our community loses their life. And we don't have all of the details, all of the facts yet. Um, and I think the main ask, at least from me and, and I think from others on council, is that people not jump to conclusions. I think. Um, this is such a charged issue anytime something like this happens that people kind of run to their corners uh, and, and stake out their their narrative. Um, we don't we don't know exactly what happened yet, um, but but at the end of the day, it's a tragedy when somebody loses their life in this community. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think um, I think, you know, it, and it's a tragedy on multiple fronts. It's a tragedy for that gentleman's family and friends. It's a tragedy for a 20 plus year veteran uh, of the of CMPD who had to shoot and kill someone. So I, there isn't anyone who should look at this and uh, and think other th anything other than the fact that w what a terrible loss for our community. And we just need to wait the process out. And and while we will continue to hold our officers accountable and, and through the normal process that's there, the community needs to know, uh, you know, no matter how you feel about it, if you have a weapon and you are instructed by an officer to put it down, you need to put it down. Of course, things have never been the same in the city since after the Keith Scott shooting several years ago after the riot, uh, then that led to the riots. Um, what, what can be done going forward to, to make sure this dialogue is more productive and, and more positive? I honestly don't know what we can do to change the dialogue. I mean, I think the police department has continued to attempt to build trust in the community. Um, I think. Do you think we're in a better place than we were a few years ago? Honestly, I don't know. Um, I think, as far as it, in regards to the circumstances around what happened, I think we have to continue to equip our officers with training around dealing with people who are in. Uh, who are dealing with a mental health crisis. I think that very well might have been uh, part of what factored into what happened earlier this week. But um, so I, I don't know. I don't know that we're better off and I don't, I don't honestly know how we change uh, the conversation. I think that um, overall we are absolutely better off. I think Chief Putney and the, and the police department have done a lot of inward looking after 2016. They've made a lot of changes. Training has been enhanced. Mental, our approach to mental health has been enhanced. And the chief has gone over and above with his bridge series and going out and having conversations in the community. I don't think inside CMPD um, th that, that they, uh, everything hasn't been done that could have been done. I think in the community and some of those areas that we also need to step to the table, I think there's a lot more work to be done there. You know, I, I do think a lot of work has gone in both on the community side and the police side to try to build trust. Um, I think there are also big camps of people who are always going to assume that the police officer was right. And there's a big camp of people who are always going to assume that the police officer was in the wrong. Uh, obviously, it's always going to be far more complicated than just right or wrong. Let me go to something that, that your one of your colleagues said, uh, Braxton Winston 
on the scene just minutes after this happened this past Monday. He was talking with both police and witnesses. In the Observer, he wrote, quote, municipal government should not be in the business of killing people, but that has happened once again. Whether it was justified, right or wrong, we are not better off at this moment than we were before 9 a.m. on Monday. We have an issue in this city, in this state, in this nation about how we de deal with justice. Of course, uh, Mr. Winston became well known a few years ago during the riots and, and, and sort of became uh, known from that. Um, your response to what he but said? It, it, Braxton is a good friend of both Larkin and I, but I'll say I, I bristle up when I read that statement. Um, not because I don't believe the underlying factor of what's said. When I see municipal government shouldn't be in the business of killing people, I mean, no one's in the business of killing people. A 20-year veteran CMPD officer didn't wake up thinking, who am I going to kill today? And I'm sure that person is devastated that that has had to happen and they're on administrative leave right now. So, like, to say, I know there's a lot to, where we have to still evolve as a nation, as a community around this very topic, but, but saying it like that... I think does a discredit to where we're ultimately trying to go. Is that what you were talking about a few minutes ago about some people being in their corners and they're always going to be? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think he's spot on when he says we're not better off than we were at 9 a.m. on Monday morning. We're never better off when somebody in our community loses their life. Uh, I do think that that's not certainly not how I would have phrased that that statement. Uh, clearly, no officer went on this call. We received multiple 911 calls to this address um, because of issues with the gentleman in question. And clearly, no officer ha went to that call with the objective of taking someone's life. Um, and it's unfortunate it ended that way. Uh, specifically, what's the rules? Because the rules have changed as, as far as body cam. What, what A judge has to sign off on the release of body cam video now per uh, relatively recent state law, I think in the last two years or so. Uh, so we are not in control of that timeline, but that's what has to take place before it can be released to the public. All right, let's switch gears for a second uh, to the ICE raids that we've talked about a lot over the last few uh, weeks. Strong words at this week's city council meeting from both sides of the immigration debate. We've been telling you for months now about the surge in ICE raids and undocumented immigrant arrests. Many activists demand city council to do more to support the affected families. Others call for the sheriff to reinstate, of course, you know it, the 287G program, and once again work with immigration officials. Raids disrupt a child's ability to live in a safe, stable, and nurturing relationship and environment and have negative effects on children. As a woman and a mom of two girls, I want ICE removing those people from our streets. No decision actually made there. Mayor Lyle's Immigration Committee continues to work through this issue. So um, w what I'd say is I think we all agree this is a v another very tough topic that we are in the middle of a heated national debate on. I think we've all agreed, you know, that this can't be fixed anywhere other than the federal level with comprehensive immigration reform. And we were in um, uh, D.C. talking to our senators and our representatives about it, and they all agreed to a person that we need it. I, I think that the, the, the real thing that people are starting to realize on both sides of this debate locally is we are not better off for having made a point in removing 287G. Right now, if 287G was still in place, it wouldn't be any different in where the national dialogue and discourse is on this. And ICE would still be doing their jobs primarily in the jails, not in the streets. It doesn't matter why they're in the streets now. It matters the fact that that's where it is. And this is the elevated level of, of, of uh, energy that's in the community. Right but now. others would say that, that Charlotte and Mecklenburg County went perfectly fine for many years without the 287G program. And many, most cities and counties across the country do just fine without it. There's now a, a bill in the state legislature that will seek to compel all sheriff's departments yeah. in North Carolina to adopt 287G or potentially face fines for not doing so. Uh, where that goes, we, I, we don't know. But um, we, we you know, better off with or with 287G? I don't know that it's, it's that binary. I don't know that it's that simple to say that. I think there are pros to, um, to the decision that the sheriff made. Obviously, it has also created negative impacts in the way that ICE is now doing their work in our community differently than they used to. I don't know any pro. I can't think of a single pro. When I think about it, I see they were doing their job. The reason, the justification for removing it was immigrants and undocumented folks in our community don't feel safe with this program. Well, they sure don't feel any safer now 
<laughs> that ICE is now having to do their job or, or well, being vindictive and whether, doing it. We, it doesn't matter. They're doing it in the streets now, not in the jails. Whether you call it a pro or not, um, Targ often advocates, and I agree, that governmental bodies should do their work and not be swerving into other people's sure. lanes. And so in this case, I would argue that federal law, federal immigration enforcement is not the job of the Mecklenburg County Sheriff's Department. And so he has gotten back into the lane of what his work is and out of the lane of the federal law enforcement. And so in, in that regard, I think that it makes more sense for him to focus on the things that are part of his, his scope of work. And not 287G. All right, flash point, uh, more flash point after this.